Good morning. This week there is no recital. Rather than giving you a poem, I decided to provide you with something different. The end. A poem, in and of itself, is never the end. It is a means to the end. A poet creates a poem in hopes that it will positively impact the lives of people around him or her. The poem is only a means to an end. The end is the positive impact on lives. I wish to share a story with you, something that happened to me on Friday night. I was sitting here in my room in this very chair when I heard some abnormal sounds coming from somewhere around me. It was probably nine o'clock at night, past my normal bedtime, believe it or not. Uh, I should have been sleeping, but I wasn't. I was up working on a speech that I have coming up this next week at a university. So I decided to go investigate. Now I'm the president of a sober living house. This is where I reside. Basically it is a large residential house in which people come to stay in hopes of rebuilding their lives. Uh, the number one rule is that there are no substances allowed. No drug use, no alcohol use, period people are here because they are recovering addicts and they need a step up in life to get back on track. Well, unfortunately, sometimes the path doesn't go as planned. So I walked into the living room, dark all but the TV, and I found one of our residents slumped over in a chair heaving for a breath that would not come. His body was sweating from the exhaustion of the task as it fought to survive. This man was overdosing on opiates. I quickly got another resident and we pulled him to the floor and administered Narcan an opiate blocker. It took four doses for him to begin to regain consciousness. Meanwhile, I dialed 911 and waited for the paramedics to arrive. By the time that they did arrive, he was already on his feet. Afterwards, friend asked me. She said, well, how do you feel? You must feel amazing about yourself. You just saved someone's life. And I told her that I didn't feel any different. She was confused. She said, well, how could that be? What do you mean? You just saved someone's life. You don't feel any different about it? And so I asked her, I said, do you feel much different when you eat or when you use the restroom? She said, well, no, but how does that relate? And I said, because it's natural. It's instinctual. The instinct to eat is just the same as the instinct to save another's life. We may consider it extraordinary, but it is not beyond the means of anyone. When you see somebody on the cusp of death and you have the power to intervene, you do naturally. There's nothing exceptional about it. It is an ingrained duty of the human to intervene.
purpose of life as I see it is to help others I wasn't so clear on that point until discovering the philosopher Aristotle some of you may know Aristotle he's quite a famous man in our culture he is said to be the founder of western thinking he lived in 300 BCE roundabouts he broke up knowledge into branches and formed formulated strengthened structured those branches of thought there's one work of his that I believe is exceptional it's called the Nicomachean Ethics now he covers a lot in this book but one thing he covers is the purpose of human life and what he does that is so amazing is that he logically walks through premise and conclusion to discover that the purpose of human life is to help people. Now how he does this is that he says that the purpose of anything is the thing that that thing does best and so he says for a flute the purpose of that flute is to be played well to play music well that is the thing specific to that instrument therefore that is its purpose now he theorizes on humans he asks, what is it that a human does very well, so well, that it does it better than anything else? That is, what is it that is specific to a human? He concludes, the rational capacity. The rational capacity to think, to reason. He says that nowhere else in this world and any other life form is the rational capacity that humans possess that is our specific virtue and so just like a flute is not just to be played but to be played well a human is not simply just to think but to think well to express that rational capacity to its highest point. And so he says the purpose then of any human is to refine the rational capacity to gain the sort of enlightenment that comes at its height. But then he stops and he says, is that truly the height of human capacity? to simply gain enlightenment for oneself? Is there something beyond that? Can you push it further? And he says, well, yes. He says, the one step further that you can push it is that once you gain enlightenment, you can then help others gain it. It is the ultimate end. There is nothing that will push your rational capacity further than attaining it for yourself and then helping spread it to others. He says this is what politics is. Politics is the relation of more than one person for an end. And that life is to gain enlightenment only so that you can then 
spread it to others in the act of politics. If you believe Aristotle or one of his theories, you are considered an Aristotelian. And now he wrote a lot, but at least with this respect to his argument in the Nicomachean Ethics, I would certainly consider myself an Aristotelian in believing that the very purpose of human life is to gain enlightenment only so that we may spread it to others and help them do the same. So see, when you understand life on such a level, saving a life is only natural is ingrained in the fiber of your being. It is fundamental to the human condition. You know, value is created by rarity. You know, there's only so much gold in the world, so it has X value. There are only so many dollars in the world, so they have X value. There are only so many classic cars of this make and that model, so they have a certain value. Value is based on rarity. But when you take a step back out of your own life, out of your city, out of your country, even out of this world, you consider the vast, unending limitlessness that this universe is, and all the inanimate matter that it is comprised of, the rarest thing in this universe, and thus in our lives as spiritual beings is life. There is nothing more rare in this universe than life. Nothing. It holds the highest value. Sometimes it's hard to see that when we're too caught up in ourselves. But that is a truth that is undeniable. all its forms is the rarest thing in existence. If you know somebody suffering from drug abuse, whether it be opiates or heroin, methamphetamine, be kind, be considerate, be thoughtful, be supportive. The man I saved, he was dead that night. On that night, he was a dead father. He was a dead friend. He was a dead citizen. His life was over. And now he gets the chance. He gets another shot to be successful, to be a good man, to be a good father, a good friend, and a contributing citizen our society. This is true of all people battling addiction. And believe me, it is a battle. These people suffer within. They suffer in silence, afraid to speak the trauma that pushes them to obliterate their emotions with narcotics. You know, Robin Williams, he 
you once said, and I'm paraphrasing, everyone you meet is fighting their own secret battle. So be kind. No one truly chooses that path. Even when they make the choice, they have been mastered by ignorance. They have been pushed to it by vice. They have been pulled down and oppressed, sometimes simply by themselves, but more often than not, by the source of their trauma. We can all be better just for today.